Back when I was an undergrad, I didn't always feel like I was accomplishing everything that I wanted. In fact, there was moments that I would study so much and I wouldn't get the grade I wanted. There were times where I felt like this is pointless to even go to class because I didn't understand what my professor was saying. Let alone there were moments where I felt like just the material itself wasn't worth learning. I found myself not wanting to study, having to force myself and put so much effort to even begin. I realize now that it was my own mindset that was holding me back. And I wanna share with you the three main things you might be currently doing that are causing you to fail and how to change them to create the winning mindset you'll need. One, you ask yourself, when will I ever use this again? And that's a valid question. There are so many times when I thought this, especially in my general education classes, several of my history classes, I just didn't see the point since I was a science major. And I recognize now that wasn't the right way of thinking. At the time, I had this purpose in my mind that I'm gonna be this dentist, I'm gonna help people, I'm gonna change and fix their smiles. And that's what I was focused on. But that was so far out into the future that I couldn't see where I was at that very moment. And you tend to feel that way, especially in your undergrad. Your goal and your ambition is so large that you don't see where you're currently at and what you currently need to get there. And though having that purpose and that goal is wonderful to know your why, it doesn't necessarily always help you on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, when I was reading this book, there was a line that really got to me and it specifically said, Recognize that your purpose is just to be where you are, doing whatever you're doing. And what I took from that was seeing your purpose right now as a student is just to study. Your purpose is not to save lives if that's what you wanna do, if you wanna be a doctor or a nurse or anything in the medical profession. Right now, your purpose on a day-to-day -day basis is to study. So thinking of that every day, what is my purpose? And it doesn't have to be this huge and major thing. Instead, it could be so small, like my purpose today is to simply finish a homework assignment. And that's fine. All of those things that you do on a day-to-day -day basis get you to that final goal of being whatever career you envision yourself to be. Two, what narratives are you repeating to yourself? Do you constantly find yourself saying, I'm bad at math, I'm not a science person, I don't have enough time, I'm just too tired, I'm not blank enough. All of these narratives that we continue to play in our minds are what we truly believe. And I would even say that this is a type of self-sabotage. In The Mountain Is You, she talks about so much self-sabotage and so many different ideas of that. And specifically, this is the one that goes along with that. She says, when you're in a pattern of self-sabotaging behavior, you're often treating those excuses the same way you would treat measurable outcomes. You're using them to make yourself feel momentarily satisfied, using them as a replacement for the accomplishment itself. And think about it that way. If you wanted to get an A on an exam, but you got a C, immediately we start to justify and say, well, I'm just not good with numbers. Well, I didn't study enough some sort of excuse, some sort of justification. And that alone is that momentary satisfaction of, yeah, okay, that, that's why. That's why I didn't achieve what I wanted. But we shouldn't be thinking that way. That's a limiting belief and that's stopping you from getting what you want. So instead, I challenge you to completely change and rewrite that narrative. And remember, it does have to be realistic. I don't expect you to say that I'm a scientist, I am a genius, I can definitely ace this exam. If you're not at that place, then you're not gonna believe that yourself. I challenge you to write down every excuse that you typically use and then decide to stop accepting them. If you truly want to get to whatever purpose, whatever goal that you set out to have, those excuses won't get you there. Your mindset is tied so closely to your self-image. And this book is all about redefining and understanding your self-image and how to change it if you don't like it. If you wanna change the narrative, you have to have an understanding of what your current self-image is and what you want it to be. So you must have an adequate and realistic self-image that you can live with. You must find yourself acceptable to you. So it's such a big concept there of seeing how you want your self-image to be, how you want yourself to be. 
You need to make it realistic to yourself right now. What is acceptable? What is something that can start small with? You must have a self that corresponds to reality so that you can function effectively in a real world. You must know yourself, both your strengths and your weaknesses, and be honest with yourself concerning both. Like let's say you're someone who doesn't do that well with taking a morning class. You don't like the mornings. Then don't schedule an 8 a.m. class. Don't state that you're gonna be someone now who's gonna wake up at 5 a.m. every day. That isn't realistic to your own strengths. And we're not comparing ourselves to everyone else because again, we all have our separate narratives. Three, you avoid studying or going to class. If you find yourself not wanting to study, avoiding it altogether, procrastinating, and pretty much just self-sabotaging in that way, then I recommend that you look for the cause of the feeling, not just the feeling itself, and you'll fix the problem for good. So it's understanding why it is you avoid studying. First, recognize how it makes you feel and not just something on the surface of it's boring. Instead, really think about what is that uncomfortable feeling and give it a name. Once you identify that feeling, that's when you can look into that feeling and understand what truly is the root of the problem. You know, going back to self-image, because this also ties back to your self-image, when your self-image is intact and secure, you feel good. But if, let's say, when your self-image is threatened, you instead feel anxious and insecure. If something goes against your self-image, so how you see yourself, you're not gonna feel good about it. In fact, you're gonna wanna hide, you're gonna wanna avoid that altogether. And something that I personally recognized whenever I would try to study for a class that I just felt unqualified for, I wanted to avoid it because my own self image at the time wasn't saying that I was smart enough or capable. That's something right there to kind of think back to the previous step of changing the narrative. Once we have a better realistic understanding of our self image, our strengths and our weaknesses, and we start to change that narrative and start telling ourselves better things instead of just negative words of I'm not good enough. And once you identify why you feel the way you feel, like if you're avoiding let's say studying, it may be because every single time you open that book, you don't understand it and it makes you feel dumb. I felt the same exact way, especially in my chemistry classes. In the very beginning, and I'd even say towards the very end because they got, they got tough. I challenge you to understand why you feel these things. Get to the root of the problem so that all of those dreams and everything that you really want right now will be so much easier to get them. This winning mindset, just this change in you will open so many doors and quite frankly, you're gonna notice a huge difference in yourself and I want that for you. And please note that I'm not someone who has it all figured out in this sense, I'm still reading and understanding more and more about my own past experiences and experiences now. The beauty of this life is that you do have the control. You do have the power to change yourself. Quite frankly, you're the only one who does. 